about 10 years ago, I decided that um, rather than keep my gender identity private, that I'd go public with it, and then I'd come out, and it's the, to use the, the phrase that, it, that tends to be thrown around in the, around these issues. Um, and it, it was interesting that, that, that um, prior to coming out, that um, I was very focused just on doing the technical work, that being the observational and descriptive, um, and that coming out enabled me to be my authentic self. So. Um, I wasn't quite so withdrawn or quite so introverted that I was able to um, express myself a bit more. And the way that played out in um, my career is I was able to communicate a lot better. Three or four years ago now, I think, I was asked to go up to Vanuatu. Um, the Naru Vuai volcano had been erupting. It had been erupting for about the previous six months. And I was asked to go up and look because there'd been a, a debris flow. And debris flow's character was to either come from volcanic eruptions as lahars, or from rainstorm events. So they wanted to know um, whether this debris flow had been caused by the volcanic eruption or was um, from a rainstorm. Um, so I went up to the island and um, went and visited this village and walked into the village and um, there were all these um, big boulders that, you know, one to two metres across had come down and destroyed these houses. So there were sheets of corrugated iron um, and there was a little fan had been built out by these boulders, I mean, hundreds of boulders. Out, out, out across the beach, gone right through the village and built a little fan out on the beach. Um, and of course with the volcano erupting there was a lot of ash around and there was kind of, you could smell the sulphur in the air. So I think one of, one of the things that um, the strike when I was talking to people is that, that um, if I'd been doing this before I'd come out, that, that it would have been, um, I would have been quite uh, stuck to the facts, whereas um, having come out that it was kind of understanding that people were distressed and a bit more empathy and compassion for um, what they were going through and being able to, something often a, a, a case it was something about listening to them and um, honouring and acknowledging their, their knowledge um, and that gave me information that uh, um, as much as anything I was getting information from them, I got information about the rainstorm, I got information about their oral histories um, and they wanted information from me, like well, what was going to happen. Um, well, I, what I can say is that the debris flow wasn't caused by the volcanic eruption, so that um, that's going to um, it's going to help. But the, the, there are other issues around the water supply and sanitation and um, food, especially the, the, the annual the vegetable crops, and the, um, because they have quite short rotation. Um, so just that, being much more aware of the, the 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 breadth of issues that people were facing. Um, rather than focus purely on the technical, this was a debris flow, it was damaged, they shouldn't build the village there. Um, it was much more, um, had a much wider lens, much wider focus um, that I was able to bring because I brought all of me. To any young people out there that are in a situation similar to where they're struggling with uh, their ident gender identity or um, a sexual orientation, that it's um, You know, it does get better, um, and it's um, it's really important to be your authentic self. That that, that um, and it can be challenging at times, really, really challenging. Um, and there's a lot of people who want to put you back um, back in your back in a box because they don't want to deal with your identity, but um, for your own peace of mind and um, your own sanity and your own worst sense of self-worth that um, honour who you are.